Masha's Tales. Some people think that decorating a Christmas tree for the holidays is a piece of cake. Not so, my dear friends. If decorating is not going the way it should, do you know what can happen? I'll tell you about it. The Wolf and the Fox. In a village far, far away, there was a man, a local fisherman, and his wife. And then in the forest nearby lived a very sly wolf who was always sneaking over and stealing fish from the fishermen. When it was Christmas time, the men decorated the Christmas tree, but he didn't feel like just sitting around waiting for Christmas to come. So he said to his wife, I'm going fishing, dear. The fox overheard that the fisherman was going fishing. So this very sly fox ran out of the forest on the road and slammed down and pretended to be absolutely not alive. When the man saw the fox, he said, that's good, my wife can use the fur for her coat. The man threw the fox into the sleigh and together they drove up the man's favorite spot. The fisherman sat on the ice by the opening and started fishing up there. He was sitting there for a long time and even started to doze off. He wasn't having any luck catching fish. But the impatient fox couldn't wait and she sat up and started to watch from the sleigh on the sly. Suddenly, someone came up and screamed behind the fox's back. What do you think you're doing? This startled the fox, who almost died of fright and grabbed her chest. But it was only the wolf. Have you gone mad, wolf? You can't go frightening people, I mean foxes, like that. Why are you screaming? Don't you see we're fishing here? The first fish is for me. Then the second one is for me, said the wolf, jumping up and down with joy. No, no, no. The second fish is also for me. And the third one, the fisherman, is mine. You go find yourself a fisherman and make him fish for you. The wolf got really sad. Where can I find myself a fisherman? And especially at Christmas time. Then catch fish for yourself, whispered the fox. But I don't know how to fish, said the wolf. Why do you come to me with your problems? What's there to know? Throw your tail into the water and sing the fish a happy song. So they swim over. So the wolf left empty-handed. He found an opening, threw his tail down into it, and then sang. The Christmas tree grew and the pond it grew all tall and green. The fish were celebrating Christmas in the water, just like the humans. They even had a cake, but what they didn't have was a Christmas tree. Then they saw the wolf's tail grow bigger in the water and started to look like a Christmas tree. Only it was gray and upside down and on the ceiling. So the fish started decorating the gray Christmas tree. The wolf felt something sticking to his tail under the water, so he became happy and sang even louder. We decorate the Christmas tree and start to celebrate. And the fish became happy too and started dancing around their decorated Christmas tail. It's time to take the catch out. The wolf decided to pull his tail out. He pulled once, nothing happened. He pulled again, but the tail wouldn't budge. That's when the wolf started to panic. Someone help me! My tail is all fished out. I can't pull it out. You know what really happened to the poor wolf's tail? While the wolf was singing, the water froze solid. Then his tail got stuck in the ice. The fox heard the wolf screaming and thought, did he really catch the fish? Now he will eat it all and leave nothing to me. So she forgot about the fisherman and ran to the wolf. Together, they tried to pull the tail out of the water but they couldn't do it. Okay, Fox, said the wolf. Go get the fisherman. You see we're stuck, we need help. The fisherman grabbed the fox. The fox grabbed the wolf. The wolf grabbed his tail, but they couldn't pull it out. The fisherman called his wife. His wife called the dog. The dog called the cat. The cat called the mouse. All together, they pulled and pulled with all their might and the tail came out of the water. Of course, there were no fish on the tip. 
just a punch of Christmas decorations. And that moment, the fireworks started. That's what I'm telling you. During the holidays, you must decorate the Christmas tree properly. It's more important than tasty cakes and sweet candies. Today, I'm not going to tell you guys a story. No, I'll do much better. I'll paint it. A long time ago, there was somebody with hands and legs and a round body. Nothing weird but his beard. It's so strange, I really have no clue why I painted my beard blue. I mean, not mine, of course, but this man's beard. Bluebeard. One fine morning, a man by the name of Bluebeard was walking in the forest. He was singing a song he'd written just a few minutes before. Ta-da, 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 da ta da 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 hmm thought Bluebeard. It really is time. Time for me to eat something. And so Bluebeard walked along thinking about how he'd already eaten breakfast and how lunch was far from being cooked. Suddenly, Bluebeard reached a clearing in the forest. In the clearing stood a small house. I'll paint it for you right now. There were sunflowers all around the house and there were carrots painted on the window shutters. If I am understanding this correctly, thought Bluebeard, these carrots mean this house belongs to the rabbit. And the rabbit is not a bad host at all. And the good host is always happy to invite his guests to lunch. Bluebeard wasted no time. He went straight to the door and knocked. Hey, hey, knock, knock, is anyone home? Knock, knock, open the door. No one answered. Maybe everyone in there was asleep. Bluebeard knocked on the door again. And again. Bluebeard knocked on the door with his fist. He kicked the door with his feet. Finally, the window shutters opened. In the window appeared a very pretty girl whose eyes were as blue as the sky. For some reason, I also painted her hair blue. I don't know why I did that. Stop knocking on my door, said the girl. You better come in and have some cocoa. Bluebeard got so excited when he saw the food that he ran right inside, sat down, and started eating. The blue-haired girl was really surprised when she saw this. How is it possible, she thought, to eat a whole cake in one go? and swallow it without even chewing it. Or stick your fingers in the dish of jam, as if that wasn't bad enough, and then lick your fingers one by one. Ew, you have such bad manners, said the girl. Uh-huh, mumbled Bluebeard. And then reaching for another piece of cake, she overturned the cup of cocoa. A brown spot started to appear on the white linen tablecloth, and it slowly took the shape of a horse. Then Bluebeard used his fingers to draw a pretty tail for this horse. The girl with the blue hair did not appreciate this kind of artistic freedom taking, and she said through tears, You're behaving like a naughty little boy. You have to be punished right now. I have to lock you up in the dark basement. The house that the girl lived in had many rooms, and you could go into any room except for the dark basement, that is. Well, I'm in deep trouble. That's what Bluebeard thought as he sat in the dark basement. Looks like I will have to stay here forever and be hungry too. He looked around the basement for some food, and suddenly he saw a stove with a burning fire. Hanging above the fire with a pot, and there was something quite tasty cooking inside it. Bluebeard tried to put his hand under the lid, but as it turned out, the oven, the fire, and the pot were all painted on an old canvas. This old canvas was hanging over a secret door. Surprised, Bluebeard decided to pull the door handle. The secret door was open, and Bluebeard saw that this closet was shock full of tasty treasures. He rubbed his eyes in disbelief. 
as Bluebeard happily gobbled up a sandwich with peanut butter and jam and honey, he thought about what had happened and said, if not for that picture, I would have lost my poor beard. No, I mean my poor head. That's what I'm telling you. When you're feeling like all is lost, a true artistic masterpiece can help lift up your spirit. Why did you have to make such a big mess in here? I have to clean everything up again. I work all day long and get no rest. Like, we little have Rochesca. Oh, hang on. Do you know who she is? Well, let me tell you. Once upon a time, there was wee little Havrocheska. Wee little Havrocheska. She would wake up every morning at sunrise and start doing the household chores. The cleaning, the washing, the ironing. Because her evil stepmother made her do it all. And stepmother's own daughters would just lay by the fire all day long and eat whatever their hearts desired. We little Havrocheska would sweep the floors, bring in the firewood for the stove, and then take the spotted cow out for the walk in the field so the spotted cow could graze on the grass. And we little Havrocheska would have nothing to graze on at all. She'd never get any food, even though she worked as hard as she could. The evil stepmother made we little Havrocheska sort three bags of wool, spin it, and weave it into cloth. The spotty cow took pity on wee little Havrocheska, so she chewed on the grass quickly and said, Listen, all you have to do is climb into one of my ears and come out of the other and boom, your work will be done for you. And guess what? It all happened. Just like the spotted cow said it would. Oh, how angry the evil stepmother was. The next day, she came up with an even more difficult task. Take this little piece of cloth right here and make me a fancy dress out of it and have it ready for tonight. And make new dresses for my daughters too. We little Havrocheska looked at the tiny piece of cloth and grew really sad. The evil stepmother kept making it worse. Actually, can you make seven dresses out of it? I will if I have to, said we little Havrocheska. Then the evil stepmother sent her two daughters to spy on wee little Havrocheska to find out who was helping her. The day was hot, so the daughters basked in the sun, lying on the grass. Then they shut their eyes and dozed off, and wee little Havrocheska sang them a lullaby. But then another disaster happened. The evil stepmother couldn't wait until the evening and went to spy on wee little Havrocheska herself. And of course, she found out all about the spotted cow helping wee little Havrocheska. Oh, how angry the evil stepmother was, she said. Take this spotted cow out into the woods at once and feed her to the wolves. Wee little Havrocheska started to cry, but she could do nothing. She took her favorite spotted cow into the woods to be fed to the wolves. We little Havrocheska and the spotted cow walked through the woods for a very long time, but they couldn't find any wolves. But they did find a pretty palace, and it was completely empty. There were cobwebs in every corner, trash on the floor, and dirty dishes on the tables. We little Havrocheska tied the spotted cow to the door and started to clean up. And by the time she was finished cleaning up, she had gotten so tired that she lay down for a short nap and fell into a deep sleep. In the meantime, seven little gnomes returned home. All seven of them were knights in shining armor. And then the leader walked in, Prince Charming. Prince Charming asked, who let the cow in here? We have no idea, said the gnomes in shining armor. Prince Charming saw the clean floors and asked, and who vacuumed our whole palace? We have no idea, said the gnomes in shining armor. And who finally scrubbed my plate clean? We have no idea. Then Prince Charming saw wee little Havrocheska and asked, who is this sleeping beauty? And the gnomes in shining armor answered, she's the one who finally scrubbed your plate clean. She is the one who vacuumed the whole palace. And she is the one who let the cow in. Prince Charming looked very surprised and said, I'll have to reward her then. I have to kiss her. 
Well, obviously, not the cow, but Sleeping Beauty, of course. Prince Charming kissed wee little Haver Cheska. She immediately started to stir in the bed and woke up. She took one look at Prince Charming, and it was love at first sight. Prince Charming and Sleeping Beauty got married and lived happily ever after. And that's what I'm telling you. If you aren't afraid of working hard and cleaning the house you live in, then you too will live happily ever after like Sleeping Beauty. Please eat, my dear little toy friends. Even though you are not the newest of all my toys, you are my favorite ones. I'll tell you a good fairy tale now. The Swineherd. In a kingdom far, far away, lived this one princess who was very fussy. More than anything in the world, the princess loved mechanical toys, especially those that were very intricately made. In her palace, she had a mechanical nightingale, a jack-in-the-box, and an artificial rose that looked very realistic. In the neighboring kingdom, there lived a prince who was very kind and who really loved animals. This prince loved cats, dogs, horses, and even little piglets. The kingdom where the prince lived was not a very big one, but there was plenty of room for everyone, like a real zoo. One day, the prince took his pigs out into the meadow and saw the fussy princess with her ladies-in-waiting playing with the mechanical nightingale. Oh my, what a beautiful princess, thought the prince. I really should get her a nice present. The prince chose the pudgiest and pinkest piglet of all of them, and he sent it to the princess. He also sent her a letter with the piglet offering the princess his hand and heart. Oh my, what a lovely little piglet, the princess screamed. So pudgy and pink, it must have cost a fortune. Just listen to the sound it's making. It snorts almost like a real piglet. Ew, said the ladies in waiting. That's because it is a real pig. What? It is not a toy, said the princess, and blinked her eyes, looking hurt. This prince can take his pig along with his hand and his heart and stay far away from my palace. How dare you treat me, a princess, like a pig? The prince, of course, was hurt. He locked himself up in the workshop of his kingdom and started to tinker with something. And about a week or so later, the princess was playing in the meadow, scaring her ladies and waiting with her jack-in-the-box. And suddenly, she heard some music. It was the prince, dressed up as a swineherd, sitting on a tree stump. He was holding a wonderful pot. All around it were little bells, and on top was a lid made of gold. Ding dong, the little bells kept ringing. Oh, you dear Augustin, Augustin, Augustin. Oh my, what is this lovely thing? The princess asked him. This here is a magic pot. I'll show you how it works. Little pot, make food, the prince said. And right away, porridge started to appear in the pot. It smelled so good and looked so tasty that all the pigs from all over the kingdom came running over in the meadow. The princess tasted the porridge and tasted some more. Yummy, yummy, and then she started to fuss. I want this pot, I want this pot. Buy me this magic pot right away. So the ladies in waiting asked the prince one heard, how much do you want for this pot? It's very expensive. You can't afford it, said the prince. How dare you talk like that, you silly swineherd. Tell me right now how much it is, or we will shoo all your little piglets away. I'll take 100 flicks on the princess's forehead in exchange for this pot. You impudent swineherd, cried the ladies in waiting. But there was nothing they could do, so the princess had to suffer. The princess returned to her palace, put the magic pot on the table, rubbed her forehead, and said, Little pot, make food! The little pot started cooking porridge, and then pigs from all over the kingdom started coming to the palace. 
they were snorting and trying to get in. And the porridge from the pot just kept spreading and spreading. Because if you wanted to turn it off, you had to say, Little Pot, don't make food. But the prince was the only one who knew this. So the princess and her ladies in waiting had to eat this porridge with the pig until the prince swineherd finally took pity on the fussy princess and forgave her. That's what I'm saying. Even the newest, most expensive toys in the world can't transform a pig into a decent human being. I'm looking at myself in the mirror. Wow, I'm so beautiful. But not everyone is so lucky. Remember, beauty is only skin deep, and that means that the true beauty comes from within. The fairy tale I'm about to tell you is all about that. Once upon a time in a far, far away land. Frog princess. There was a palace, and in that palace lived a king, and that king had three sons. The king and his three sons played all sorts of games together, like tag and hide and seek. Then his sons grew up, and well, they got bored, so they decided to get married. The king had to figure out how to find three brides for his three sons. Finally, he had a great idea. The king takes the princess out into the open field and hands each one of them a bow and arrow. Shoot away, he tells them. The sons don't want to disobey their dad, so they shoot arrows in different directions. And then the king tells them, follow your arrow. Now this is important. Wherever your arrow landed is where you will find a buried treasure. I mean, not a buried treasure, a blushing bride, of course. The two oldest brothers find two ordinary brides. But when the younger brother, whose name is Prince Ivan, shoots the arrow, it keeps flying and flying and almost hits a bunny. The bunny gets scared and starts running and steps on a chicken. The chicken gets so upset with her feathers all ruffled that she lays an egg. But it's no ordinary egg. It's made of pure gold. The egg starts rolling and rolls over the mouse's tail. The mouse tries to run away. She swipes his tail and the egg falls and breaks. And guess what is in the egg? A frog! Prince Ivan sees the frog and can't believe his eyes. Impossible! How can a boy marry a frog? Then the prince starts crying. But the frog tells him, Don't cry, my prince chiming. I will lay another golden egg for you. Oh no! I mean, the frog tells him, Don't cry, my prince chiming. If you marry me, I will be a very good wife for you. Prince Ivan sighs. But he really has no choice. There's nothing he can do. So he brings the frog home. And she starts living at the palace. Like a pet, you know. Like a turtle or a guinea pig. Prince Ivan takes good care of her. He catches flies for her. And the frog sings to him. Crow, 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 crow. I'm going to have to cut this story short because I don't have all day and night. So the king announces the three weddings. The eldest son will marry the daughter of a nobleman, the middle son will marry the daughter of a wealthy man, and the youngest son will marry a frog. The king also orders each of the three brides to prepare all sorts of delicious treats for the big wedding feast. Prince Ivan becomes really sad and the frog asks him, why are you so sad, my darling? Well, how could I not be sad? You obviously don't know how to cook or bake. I have to make treats for myself. But the frog says to him, Don't be sad, my darling. Tomorrow is another day. So please go to sleep and don't worry. I will figure out something. When Prince Ivan wakes up in the morning, he sees a three-tiered cake on the table with a groom made of chocolate and a bride made of caramel. This makes Prince Ivan so happy that he's ready to kiss the frog. But she tells him, oh, no, no, no. I'm not kissing you before the wedding. You'd better take this cake and hurry over to the palace. I'll be right over. Everyone is already gathered at the palace. When they see the cake, they want to gobble it all up. And then, all of a sudden, there's a huff and there's a puff. Everyone gets scared and looks at Prince Ivan. Prince 
Prince Ivan also gets scared. He looks out the window and says, oh, it's just my frog riding over in her pumpkin carriage. Then everyone calms down and starts to force all the brides and grooms to kiss. That's what they do at the wedding. They kiss and eat cake. So Prince Ivan kisses his frog, and she turns into such a beautiful princess that everyone just stands there with their jaws on the floor. And the moral is this. You need to take good care of all the pets that live in your home. Take really good care of them. This will make your pets feel so wonderful and happy that it could turn out to be the beginning of a really beautiful friendship. Wondering why I decided to study foreign languages? Because I don't want to end up in a situation like this one Caliph from a fairy tale. Just listen to this. Caliph Stork. A long time ago, there was this Caliph, the ruler of Baghdad. He never studied anything. He just sat by the window all the time, looking at the little birdies and thinking. I am Caliph. I am the ruler of my land. I can do anything I want, and yet I cannot understand what these little birdies are chirping about. Caliph became so sad and unhappy that he started crying his eyes out like a little baby. All sorts of doctors were called in, and they tried to help Caliph, but no one could make him happy again. And then one day, a strange little man showed up at the palace. He was very short, but his nose was very long. He had donkey's ears and stuck out under his turban. And there was a parrot perched on his shoulder. Oh, Caliph, I came to help you, said the little man. I know exactly how to make you happy again. Eat this fruit, do a somersault, and then shout very loudly. Marathon! Oh, no. You shout, Matador! No, not Matador. What's the foreign word that we were supposed to say? Oh, I remember. Do a somersault and then chill very loudly, Mutabor. Then you'll be able to turn into any animal, bird, or fish you want to. And after you do your transformation, you'll be able to understand what the animals are talking about. But remember, if you laugh, you will forget the word Mutabor and you won't be able to turn back into a human again. Caliph ate the grape right away. He did a somersault and then shouted, Mutabor, I wish to turn into a stork. And boom, Caliph checked himself out in the mirror. He had a beak instead of his nose. His neck was long, his head was small. His legs were like sticks and he had a little tail too. It's like the fun house mirror. Caliph couldn't help it and started laughing so hard. And of course, he forgot all about the outlandish foreignish word, just like that. Caliph Stork clipped his beak and did some somersaults, but he couldn't turn back into a human again. Then the little man climbed up to the throne and told Caliph, that's the end of you, my little birdie. Now I will be ruler of Baghdad. Give me that Caliph turban now. That's when Caliph Stork realized that the little man had tricked him, and he burst into tears again, even worse than before. Okay, okay, stop crying, the little man told Caliph. I will grant you one hour. If in that time you can find out my name, you will turn back into human again. Caliph felt really lost. How will I be able to find out his name? That's when the parrot flew over to Caliph and whispered into his ear. I'm going to tell you the name of the little man. But in return, you have to marry me. Oh no, this is simply unbelievable. A stork can't marry a parrot, but there was nothing he could do. And that's when the parrot told Caliph, listen to what I tell you very carefully, but be sure not to laugh again. The little guy with the long nose is really the evil wizard. He turns an illiterate person into wild animals. And this is his name, Rumpelsnout Skin. As soon as Caliph Stork heard this, he rushed over to the evil wizard. The evil wizard was sitting on the throne, kicking up his feet. The Caliph shouted at the top of his lungs, Hey, you Rumpelsnout Skin, get off my throne. 
the evil wizard got really annoyed. How did you find my name? And he got so angry that he exploded into pieces. After the evil wizard had exploded, the evil spell was broken. And Caliph Stork turned back to a human again. He looked at the parrot and he couldn't believe his eyes. Instead of the parrot that had been there a second ago, beautiful Princess Jasmine was standing before him. Caliph was very happy. He married her and right after the wedding, he went to school and started to study. So he would not turn into an animal ever again. That's what I'm telling you. When you know foreign languages, they can help you out of many difficult situations. No, 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 don't even try to make me. I won't play these music scales. And no, not because I'm lazy. It's just, it's just that I'll tell you a fairy tale. Once upon a time, three little pigs, three brothers came to live near the magic forest in some faraway land. And these brothers were piglets. Their names were Boo Boo, Woo Hoo, and Oopsie Daisy. The pig brothers loved to have fun, just like any other piggies. They would lie in the mud puddle or run through the forest scaring the animals. Or they would eat the acorns and leave nothing for the rest. All you could hear in the forest all day long was them running, squealing, and snorting. And the worst thing of all was that these pig brothers loved to play music. They found some musical instruments, a guitar, a drum, and a big shiny one. I'm not sure what they call it, but they always have them in the marching band. So anyway, as soon as the moon came out, the Pig Brothers would come out to and sit on the riverbank by the fire and hold their concert. They would sing very loudly and no one around them could sing. Pigs are the greatest and the best, tra-la-la, tra-la-la. Pigs are smarter than the rest, tra-la-la-la-la. The animals called the police. They protested and complained. But nothing worked. They couldn't get the pigs to stop making noise. Then summer ended and autumn came to the magic forest. But the pigs were not afraid of the cold. Over the summer, they had put so much bacon on their bones, they could barely get into their houses. They squealed and squeezed through the door sideways. So the animals in the forest grew really sad. Winter was coming. They had to hibernate in their lairs. But how could they sleep with these piggy concerts blaring away? The animals grew sadder and sadder. But it's no use crying over spilt milk. After that, the animals gathered for an all force meeting. And they started to think about how to make the pig brothers move out. They argued, they shouted. And finally, the animals decided to scare the pig brothers away. They dressed the sheep into the wolf's clothing and sent him off to scare away the pigs. So the sheep galloped up to the pig's houses and bleated. Ba! The pig brothers looked out their window and they couldn't believe their eyes. Again, the sheep again to them. Ba! The pig brothers laughed so hard that two of their houses fell down. At first, the animals were happy. At least they'd gotten rid of two of the pig brothers, but that was not the case. Boo Boo and Woo Hoo got out from underneath their broken houses and moved in with their brother, Oopsie Daisy. So the three little pigs lived in a solid stone house, very comfortable. They sat by the window and sang their songs as loudly as ever. Come what may, tra-la-la, tra-la-la. You can't scare the pigs away, tra-la-la-la-la. Again, the animals gathered for another all forest meeting. And this is what they decided. One early morning, after another one of the pigs' all-night concerts, when the pig brothers had just gone into sleep, all the animals went over to the pig's house. The sheep stuck her nose through the window. 
The dog climbed over her back. The cat jumped over the dog, and the rooster landed on the cat's head. All the animals started to scream all at once. The dog said, "Meow." The cat said, "Cock-a-doodle-doo." The rooster said, "Woof, woof," and the sheep said, "Ba." Bad piggies, you'd better back out of here with your band. The three little pigs got so scared that they ran around the house and they fled in different directions. After that, there were no more troublemakers in the forest and everything was nice and quiet. That's what I'm telling you. You have to think of those who live next to you. And if you want to sing songs, dance, and play music, Show it in special places called music halls. So so so, where could all of the cartoons be hiding? Hmm. Let's start an investigation. Ah! One two three four five six. Let's look for cartoons to pick. I will press this microphone. Masha and the. Band. 